Hey guys, Fagathron here. Update 1.5 for Stardew Valley brought with it a huge array of new items to play with. In this video, we will explore what these new items do, how useful they are, and how to get them. We will break them down into two main sections. First, we'll go over the items obtained through the new Special Orders board, and after that, we'll go through the ones obtained from Key's Walnut Room. The Special Orders board, not to be confused with the Help Wanted board, is unlocked on the second day of fall in Year 1, and is located right below Mayor Lewis's house. Players will be able to accept one of two offered quests to complete for various rewards, with new quests being offered every Monday. The first item we're going to look at is the solar panel. The recipe for this item is obtained by completing the request Island Ingredients for Caroline. To complete this quest, you will need to ship 100 taro root, ginger or pineapple in 28 days, which will require Ginger Island to be unlocked. Built from 10 pieces of refined quartz, 5 iron bars and 5 gold bars, the solar panel will generate one battery pack every 7 days it's out in the sun. The solar panel is a slower but more reliable way of getting battery packs than the lightning rod. While rods only need one day to create a battery, they need the fairly rare stormy weather to function and just sit there collecting dust every other day. Solar panels on the other hand will work as long as it's not rainy. Yep, this surprisingly means winter is one of the best seasons for them as it never rains. Next up we have the Geode Crusher. The recipe for this item is obtained by completing the quest Cave Patrol for Clint. To complete this quest, kill 50 bats, dust sprites, skeletons or grubs within the 7 day time limit. Once this is done, the Geode Crusher can be crafted using 2 gold bars, 50 stone and 1 diamond. The Geode Crusher works the same way a furnace does, in that you need one piece of coal per use, except instead of ore, the Crusher only accepts geodes, opening them for you and saving you a trip to Clint. So, how useful is it? Well, it depends on where you are in the game. Early on, when the resources are tight, a single piece of coal will set you back 150 gold in year 1, or 250 gold in year 2 when buying from Clint. Compare this to the 25 gold Clint charges to open a geode, and you're potentially paying 10 times more than you should be. So unless you have coal to burn, this is not the most efficient way to open geodes early on. Towards the end game, however, when such small amounts of gold are trivial and your time is worth more, I absolutely think the geode crusher is worth the investment. Being able to load it up and continue your farm work, instead of walking all the way to Clint's house, is a real time saver. And if you place it right near your front door and load it on your way out every morning, and again when you come home, you'll find yourself racking up artifacts and prismatic shards with almost no effort at all. Up next we have the farm computer. The recipe for this item is obtained by doing the Aquatic Overpopulation quest, which requires you to fish 10 specific fish, or the Bio Balance quest, which requires you to catch 20 fish from the river, ocean, or lake. Both of these are given by Demetrius. To construct the farm computer, you'll need one dwarf gadget, one battery pack, and one refined quartz. The farm computer, when activated, will give various readouts about your farm, such as how much hay you have stored. This is a nice time saver for when you don't want to go manually checking your silos, especially in winter when you suspect your food supply is dwindling. How many crops are currently planted? This is a cool way to get an exact count on your crops. However, I don't find I need to know this information very often. How many crops are ready for harvest? This is particularly useful on large farms where you may not look at a section of crops every day. How many crops need watering? This is handy if you're not sure you've watered everything on a given day. If your greenhouse plants are ready, this is handy as the greenhouse is very easy to forget. If there are foraged items on your farm, the best use for this would be on the beach farm layout where rare crates can occasionally spawn. How many machines are ready? This is a good alternative to placing kegs outside your shed as a visual indicator. However, checking this way means you'll want to check the farm computer often. If your farm cave is ready, this is better for the mushroom cave than it is for the fruit cave, as all six mushrooms usually spawn at the same time. Next, we have the sewing machine. This item is obtained by doing the rock rejuvenation quest where Emily will ask you to deliver five gems. The sewing machine allows the player to dye and craft clothing. It can also be used to change the appearance of boots without losing the defense and immunity bonuses. This works exactly the same as the one in Emily's house, and while it is handy to have in your home, Generally, it's not something that is used regularly, which makes it a little lower on the usefulness scale than some of the other items on this list. On to the coffee maker. This is received by completing Evelyn's quest called Gifts for George, which will ask you to gather 12 leeks. These are forageable items that can be found during the spring. The coffee maker automatically brews one cup of coffee per day out of thin air. This is very useful if you don't have a stockpile of coffee already, and guarantees you'll spend at least part of every day with a nice speed bonus that also affects your horse. Next up is the Bone Mill. The recipe for this item is obtained by completing Gunther's quest, Fragments of the Past, where he will task you with the job of collecting and delivering 100 bone fragments. 
The bone mill is crafted out of 10 bone fragments, 3 clay and 20 stone, and has the ability to convert mostly useless bones into useful fertilizer. 5 bone fragments or a single larger bone will generate around 5 random fertilizer, with a small chance to double this number. What you get out is completely random, so rare bones won't give better fertilizer. This item has single-handedly made me care about collecting bones, as it feels great to be passively getting fertilizers and always having a good supply. Prior to this, I was simply selling bones to clear out inventory space. Especially early into the game, fertilizer can feel like a bit of a luxury item, but this makes it feel far more accessible. Up next we have the mini shipping bin. This item can be received as a reward for two separate quests, one from Lewis who asked you to ship 100 of a specific crop simply called Crop Order, and the other one from Pierre's quest called Pierre's Prime Produce, where he'll request you to harvest and drop 25 gold quality vegetables into the box in his shop. Whichever quest you do, you'll receive the mini shipping bin in the mail the following morning. This works the same as the normal shipping bin, however only 9 unique items can be shipped per day. What makes this so handy however, is you can freely move the bin without having to use Robin's building move services. Next up we have fibre seeds. The fibre seed recipe is obtained by completing Linus's quest, Community Cleanup, where you'll be asked to gather 20 pieces of trash and place them in the bin by the train station. The easiest way I've found to do this is to go fishing in your farm pond, or in the water you find on some levels in the wines. To craft fibre seeds, you'll need 1 mixed seeds, 5 sap and 1 clay. This crafting recipe will give you 5 fibre seeds, and each will give you roughly 4 fibre after 7 days of growing. For players who have a lot of animals on their farm, fibre is usually in high demand due to needing 10 for a single grass patch. And what makes this even better? It's the only real crop that can be planted in the winter. I can see a good strategy being to save up fibre seeds until winter, then using the free space other crops inhabited to plant your fibre seeds. Next up we have the stone chest. The stone chest recipe is obtained by completing Robin's resource rush, which will ask you to gather 1000 wood or stone, which as a bonus you get to keep. This functions exactly the same as normal chests, the only difference being it's crafted from 50 stone instead of 50 wood, and has a different appearance. This isn't a game changer by itself, however it is nice to have the choice of using stone instead of wood if you're low on a certain resource. On to the deluxe fishing tank. This item is obtained by completing the quest Juicy Bugs Wanted for Willy which requires you to collect 100 bug meat and place them in the bin near the fish shop. After doing this you'll receive one in the mail and also be able to purchase more from the fish shop for 5000 gold or for free from the furniture catalogue. This item serves no practical function, however it is a nice way to show off core fish and makes your house look a little more interesting. The appearance can also be altered by placing coral, seaweed, stone or clams into the tank. And another fun little easter egg is you can actually equip hats on your sea urchins, just like your horse. Next we have the mini obelisk. The mini obelisk recipe is awarded after completing the quest A Curious Substance for the Wizard, who will ask for one ectoplasm. Ectoplasm is a rare drop from ghosts, only available during this mission. It has a 9.5% chance to drop after killing one. I find the quickest way to find ghosts is to go to levels 51 to 79 of the mines and repeating these floors until you get the drop. Once you have the recipe, you'll need 30 hardwood, 20 solar essence and 3 gold bars to craft the item, although keep in mind you'll need 2 for them to function. Speaking of, what do they actually do? Mini obelisks act as a two way teleporter between the two spots you place them. The only restrictions are, they must be outside on your farm and only two can be placed. This item is extremely useful and is a huge time saver when navigating your farm. Personally, I put one right near my house and the second one on the far side of my farm near the coop or barn. The only downside is your horse cannot teleport with you. However, this issue is solved by an item I'll talk about later in this video. And the last item you can get through the quest is Monster Musk. The Monster Musk recipe is obtained by completing the Prismatic Jelly quest for the wizard. In this quest you'll have to hunt down a rare prismatic slime and kill it for its prismatic jelly. The monster only spawns during the time this quest is active and I find the best method is going from levels 1 to 20 of the mines and repeating until you find one. Once you get the recipe, you'll need 30 slime and 30 bat wings to craft the concoction. The effect of this potion will cause more monsters to spawn for 10 minutes, which can be very handy when trying to farm certain monsters such as dust sprites for their coal. That's all for the special orders quests, next we have a few miscellaneous items to cover before we move on to the item from Key's Walnut Room. The first one being the ostrich incubator. The recipe for this item is given to you upon completion of the fossil collection on Ginger Island for Professor Snail and is crafted out of 50 bone fragments, 50 hardwood and 20 cinder shards. This item allows you to incubate ostrich eggs, the first of which can be dug up with the golden walnut in a certain spot on Ginger Island. Fully grown ostriches will lay one ostrich egg every 7 days, which in turn will create 10 mayonnaise that will be whatever quality the ostrich egg is. 
This means each ostrich will produce the equivalent of 10 chicken eggs per week, three more than a chicken would. And as an added bonus, you only have to pick up the eggs once per week, making them lower maintenance and a bigger money maker. Next up is the Auto Petter, which can be bought from Jojo Mart after completing the warehouse for 50,000 gold, or rarely found in the Skull Cavern treasure chests, or from killing monsters in the hard mode mines and Skull Cavern. The Auto Petter, when placed in barns or coops, will prevent hearts and the mood of animals from decaying. As an added bonus, manually petting animals will cause the hearts to go up even faster than normal. Just note that without physically petting animals, this machine alone won't get animals hearts up. You'll still need to pet them yourself to hit max, but once you do hit max, this machine will keep them there with no interaction needed. Next we have the telephone, which can be bought for 2000 gold from the carpenter's shop. This item allows you to call any shop to check if they are open, as well as browse their current selection of stock. Keep in mind you cannot actually buy anything, only browse. The exception is Marlin at the Adventurer's Guild, who you can request over the phone to retrieve any items you may have lost due to dying in the mines. Now into the walnut room items. To access this, you need to have collected 100 or more golden walnuts on Ginger Island. If you need help with this, I do have a guide on how to collect all 130, which you can check out here. Once this room is unlocked, all items will be accessible in the shop. However, they do require key gems to buy instead of gold, which can be earned by completing Key's weekly tasks, also available in this room. First item in this list is the Junimo chest, costing 30 gems for two. The Junimo chest is a unique chest that shares inventory with all other Junimo chests in your game. This means you can do cool things like have one chest on your farm and one on Ginger Island and use it to ferry items from one place to the other. You can place as many Junimo chests as you like, however no matter how many you have, you'll still be limited by the nine inventory spaces that the chest provides. Next up, we have the horse flute for 50 gems. Remember earlier in the video, I said your horse not coming with you through obelisks wouldn't be a problem? Well, this item's why. Playing the horse flute while outside will summon your horse directly to you, even if you're on Ginger Island. The flute has no cooldown and is not consumed on use. The only negative thing I can say about this item is that it will take up one extra inventory spot while carrying it. However, the trade-off is well worth it. Pierre's missing stock list is the next item we'll be looking at and costs 50 gems. As a farmer, this item won't do much for you. Giving it to Pierre, however, will allow him to offer seeds from all seasons all year round. This is especially handy when combined with the Greenhouse or Ginger Island Farm which can grow any season's crops all year round. There is a 50% cost markup on seeds that are out of season, but this is a small price to pay for having complete freedom to grow what you want, when you want. Next up we have the Hopper, which can be bought individually for 10 gems each, or you can craft it yourself by purchasing the recipe for 50 gems It requires 10 hardwood, 1 iridium bar, and 1 radioactive bar to build. To get radioactive ore, you need to have done Key's quest called Danger in the Deep, which will unlock the hard mode version of the mines. The hopper is an item that will automatically load items into whatever machine is placed in front of it. For example, if you place a furnace in front of it, and load the hopper with copper ore and coal, it will automatically be placed into the furnace. Once the copper bar is ready, taking it will instantly start the next bar smelting. This can be used with most machines that process items. This item is pretty useful, however it's held back by two main factors. First, being that you'll need to manually take out the refined product before the next item will begin its process, and the second problem is you cannot rotate the machine, so it does limit the placement options, as only one side of the machine will load items. Despite these drawbacks, I do think this item has a place on the farm, and does save you a bit of time and inventory space once it's set up. This is especially so once you're nearing the end of the game and are willing to pay for convenience. Next up is the Enricher, which can be bought in a bundle of four for 20 key gems, and can also drop rarely from monsters in the hard version of the mines. The Enricher is an attachment that goes over sprinklers, and once loaded with fertilizers, will automatically fertilize all watered areas if there is a seedling planted. Since it's based on the range of the sprinkler, it's best to use this on an Iridium sprinkler for maximum effect. This item is okay, however since you only fertilize once per growth cycle, I don't find it entirely necessary, especially when it's competing against another far superior item, which we'll talk about next. And that item is the pressure nozzle, which costs the same as the enricher at 20 key gems for 4, or can also drop rarely from monsters in the hard version of the mines. The pressure nozzle is another attachment that can be placed on the sprinklers and extends range by one in every direction. At first glance, an extension of one space doesn't sound like a lot, but in reality, this means it doubles the area of the basic sprinkler, triples the area of the quality sprinkler, and doubles the area of the iridium sprinkler. While the quality sprinkler gets the biggest percent increase, the Iridium Sprinkler goes from covering 24 spaces to a whopping 48 spaces. Now you can see why this attachment completely overshadows its competition. Next up is the Deconstructor for 20 gems. The Deconstructor will consume an item you place in it and return the most valuable stack of items that was used to create it. 
This is extra handy for items that only use one crafting ingredient, as you'll get 100% of the items used to craft back. While it's not that often you really need to get materials back from crafted items, there are a few noteworthy tricks that can enhance the usefulness of this item. First is that you can destruct fishing bobs that are about to expire, essentially getting free materials from something that would have otherwise vanished. Another is that you can essentially buy fibre from Pierre by purchasing a grass data from him and putting it into the deconstructor, giving you 10 fibre for just 100 gold. Next we have an absolute bargain with Key to the Town for a measly 20 key gems. The Key to the Town is a wallet item that allows access to any building in Pelican Town at any time, except during festivals. This is super useful when trying to increase your hearts with the villagers, or when completing delivery quests as you'll get a bit of extra time in the morning and at night to interact. Oddly enough, no one seems to care that you walk about their house at 1pm at night, and while you can't interact with villagers if they are asleep, most characters do lay in bed in the morning awake or relax at home before actually going to sleep. Outside of improving your relationship through breaking and entering, this also gives you 24-7 access to the sewing machine in Emily and Haley's house once unlocked. Next up is the Galaxy Soul, which can be bought for 40 gems from Key, traded for 10 radioactive bars the last day of the month from the island trader, or rarely dropped from monsters in the hard mode version of the mines. Very Galaxy Souls are needed to upgrade your Galaxy weapon into an Infinity weapon, which is the strongest weapon in the game. To do this, just take 3 souls to the Volcano Forge at Ginger Island along with 60 Cinder Shards. Place them in the forge along with your weapon and hit the forge button until all 3 souls are consumed. Upon consuming the third soul, your weapon will be transformed, retaining any enchantments it had and getting a significant stat increase. Next we have the Mushroom Tree Seeds for 5 gems each. The mushroom seeds, as you would expect, allow you to plant mushroom trees anywhere you would plant a normal tree. These trees normally only spawn during a rare fall event and will produce common mushrooms, red mushrooms and purple mushrooms when tapped. This makes it extra valuable to players who choose the fruit bat cave option for their farm as it provides a way for them to obtain mushrooms without going into the mines. Next we have the magic bait which you can buy 20 of for 5 gems or get the recipe for 20 gems which requires 1 radioactive ore and 1 bug meat. Magic bait allows you to catch any fish from a water source at any time, weather or season. This is incredibly handy if you need to catch an out of season fish for a quest or recipe, or if you're hunting down a legendary fish and didn't catch it before the season's end. Next is Key Seasoning, which is purchased in a bundle of 10 for 10 gems. While Key Seasoning is in your fridge or inventory, it will automatically be added to cooking recipes and create a gold star version of the food, increasing health and energy values by 80% and sell price by 66%. Any extra stat buffs besides speed will also be bumped up by an extra point, as well as have its duration increased. This can be used for things like the fishing buff from the seafoam pudding to increase your fishing skill by a whopping 5 points, and can be a very versatile ingredient to give you an edge in whatever activity it is you're doing. Next we have the Heavy Tapper recipe, which costs 20 key gems and is crafted with 30 hardwood and 1 radioactive bar. The Heavy Tapper is an upgraded version of the Tapper, which produces syrup, tar and resin at double the speed. This is handy if you have the resources to craft it, however other than saving some space doesn't offer much advantage over just placing two normal tappers. Up next we have three kinds of fertilizer. The first is the Hyper Speed Grow, whose recipe can be bought for 30 gems and is crafted with one radioactive ore, three bone fragments and one solar essence. Hyper Speed Grow increases grow speed by 33%, and unlike most fertilizers, can be added at any stage of plant growth instead of just at the seed stage. This is best used on crops that will allow you to sneak in an extra harvest or two before the end of the season, or if you're simply impatient to harvest a certain crop. Next up, the deluxe fertilizer recipe for 20 gems, which requires one iridium bar and 40 sap to craft five. The deluxe fertilizer increases the chance to grow quality crops, and is also the only item in the game that allows crops to be of iridium quality when harvested. At farming level 10, the deluxe fertilizer will produce gold quality crops 48% of the time and iridium quality crops 41% of the time. For reference, a gold quality crop is worth 1.5 more than the base crop, while iridium is worth double the price of the base crop. So to get more bang for your buck, be sure to only use this on crops with a high base price. And finally, the deluxe retaining soil recipe for 50 cinder shards from the island trader. This is crafted with 5 stone, 3 fibre and 1 clay. This can be mixed into soil at any stage of a plant's life and has a 100% chance of keeping the soil watered overnight. What this means is once a plant is watered with this retaining soil, it will never need to be watered again. This is incredibly handy for the beach farm layout with its limit on sprinklers, as well as plot plants which also cannot benefit from sprinklers. And our next item is the golden egg. 
This item is only available if you have obtained a 100% perfection rating and cost 100 key gems. Alternatively, you can buy this from Marnie for 100,000 gold. Progress for your perfection rating can be checked on the machine in the walnut room, but basically requires you to have completed and bought everything in the game. The golden egg when placed in an incubator will produce a golden chicken. Yep, the egg does come before the chicken in this case. Golden chickens will produce one golden egg per day, which in turn creates three gold quality mayonnaise. This means each chicken will produce 21 gold quality mayonnaise per week worth 5,985 gold before any skill bonuses or 8,379 gold with the artisan profession. This beats out even ostriches producing iridium quality eggs by about 3,000 gold. However, keep in mind, ostrich eggs only need your attention one time per week. And the very last item is the Statue of True Perfection. Just like the golden egg, you'll need to have a 100% perfection rating to access this item. Once this has been achieved, approach the cat computer in Key's walnut room and you'll receive the statue. This item is similar to the Statue of Perfection and Statue of Endless Fortune, but this time it will generate one prismatic shard every morning, which is extremely useful for enchanting your tools. That's all for this one. If you enjoyed the music in this video, be sure to check out the artists on the left side of the screen. And if you liked what you saw, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.